trust me. Amen. Father, we thank you for another Shabbat service. Thank you for being in your presence. We are very grateful for the gift of life. It's a privilege to be an honor to be in your presence and to observe the Shabbat. We worship you. Our hearts and minds are open to receive from you today. We ask for an open spirit and hearing ears. Be with us and abide with us now for long. Our Bible reading today is taken from Hebrews 11, from verse 1 to 40. Hebrews 11, 1 to 40 says, I read from verse 1. Now, faith is, a, is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at Elohim's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. I'm reading from verse 4. By faith, Abel offered Elohim a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as a righteous man. When Elohim spoke well of his offerings, and by faith, he still speaks even though he is dead. Verse 5. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life, so that it is impossible to please Elohim. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. Verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place, he would later receive as, an, as his inheritance, obeyed and went even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is Elohim. By faith, Abraham, even though he was past age, and Sarah herself was barren, was enabled to become a father because he considered himself faithful, who had made the promise. Verse 12. And so from this one man, as he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. And they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on earth. Verse 14 says, People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, Elohim is not ashamed to be called their Elohim, for he has prepared a city for them. Verse 17 says, By faith, Abraham... When Elohim tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice, he who had received the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son. Even though Elohim had said to him, It is true, Isaac, that your offspring will recon, Abraham reasoned that Elohim could raise the dead, and figuratively speaking, he did receive Isaac back from the dead. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. 21 says, by faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's son and worshipped as he leaned on top of his staff. 22 says, By faith, Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions about his bones. 25 says, By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. 24 says, By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of Elohim, rather than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a short time. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Yeshua as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt, because he was looking ahead to his reward. 27 says, By faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. 28. By faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. 
29 says, By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as on the dry land, but when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. 30. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the people had marched round about them for seven days. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. 32 says, And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shot the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle, and rooted foreign armies. That five says, Women received back their dead to life, raised to life again. Others were tortured and refused to be released, so that they might gain a better resurrection. Then this says, Some faced jest and flogging, while some others were chained and put in prison. They were stoned, they were sawed in two, they were put to death by the sword. They went about in sheepskin and goatskin, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes and in the ground. That's nice said, These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. For he says, God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us will they be made perfect. This is the word of Elohim. Thanks be to Elohim. Amen. Father, we thank you. We bless your matchless holy name. Our hearts and minds are open today. It's such a privilege that we are together today in this special holy day. We bless you for your love and your compassion and your grace and your goodness. Thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for the Bible reading. We've seen the journey and the lives of the men of faith. Men who trusted. Men who persevered. Men who anchored their lives on your word and your promises. But thank you for this community of believers around the world. Thank you for House of Israel Worldwide. Thank you for House of Israel USA. House of Israel UK, House of Israel Ukraine, and House of Israel Lagos, Nigeria, the things you're doing in our midst. Thank you for the privilege to be gathered together today in this special season, in this feast of the Barakul. Thank you for this special Shabbat, and we thank you because we are enjoying the privilege of life. Thank you for eyes to see and ears to hear. Thank you for the spirit of comprehension and understanding and knowledge today. Thank you because our hearts and minds are open to receive your precious holy word. Thank you for courage and confidence. Thank you for boldness. Thank you for faith. Thank you for perseverance. We we'll bless you today, Father. We we'll thank you for those who are on their way. To service today, we pray you link them here safely. Thank you, Jehovah, for those who are with us through the internet, the families, the partners who are watching through the internet today, and who are part of this service today. We pray you will grant to them understanding and you bless us together richly as we examine your word, as we receive special word from the spirit of Elohim. We pray that. At the end of this service today, we have full cause to praise you. 
in Yeshua's name. Amen. I want to welcome us today to our Shabbat Holy Convocation service. And I believe that Yehovah will bless every one of us richly. And for those who are joining us through the internet, I want to encourage us to please let's share this broadcast. Let's share this broadcast. Let's host a watch party and let's... I want the lady to take care of her. Can that be, can, can that be possible, please? Yeah, she can go outside. So for those who are also the internet, I want to encourage us to please share this broadcast and host watch parties and like our page, pray for us, and together we will reap the fruits of righteousness. Now, at the House of Israel, we share five unique visions. As a ministry, we have five unique visions. Our vision as a ministry is to be a worshipping people. At the House of Israel, our vision is to be a worshipping people. Secondly, our vision is to be an evangelistic community. Thirdly, our vision is to be a discipleship center. Fourthly, our vision is to be an equipping network. And lastly, our vision is to be a worldwide witness of Yeshua the Messiah. And our mandate as a ministry is to take the true gospel of the kingdom to the ends of the earth. Five core vision. A worshiping people. An evangelistic community. A discipleship center, an equipping network, and a worldwide witness of Yeshua the Messiah. And I pray of God will help us to be faithful and committed to this vision in Yeshua's name. Amen. Today is a special day. And at the end of this teaching, I will, we'll have time for interaction. We'll have time for interaction. Because this is a very interactive teaching. And I'm praying that your ears will be opened to everything being taught today. For those who are with us, our friends and family in the internet, who watch us through the internet, our services through the internet, I pray you stay encouraged in this season. And you keep us bearing in your faith. And together we'll accomplish great things for the kingdom. Last Shabbat, we began, we began to explore perseverance. We explored perseverance. We continued doing our discipleship training to examine. We examined perseverance in the light of Elohim, our sustainer. Sustainer. And today we are looking at faith and perseverance. Faith and perseverance. Uh, I think with this teaching will bring to an end a series on perseverance. So today we'll bring an end to the teaching, the series on perseverance that I began last Shabbat. So if you've missed any of the teaching, you can go on our Facebook, House of Israel, Nigeria, and watch again the teachings so far on perseverance. Today we explored faith and perseverance. Turn your Bibles with me straight to Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews 6 verse 10. Hebrews chapter 6 from verse 10. Hebrews chapter 6 from verse 10. Elohim is not unjust he will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. We want each of you to show this same diligence to the very end so that what, so that what you hope for may be fully realized. Verse 12, we do not want you to be lazy but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Who through faith and patience inherit the promise. The, word, the Greek word for patience is the same word for perseverance. So we could exchange the word for we do not want you to be lazy, but to imitate those who through faith 
and perseverance inherit what has been promised. So today we are looking at this statement, true faith and perseverance inherit what has been promised. Now look at again at that Hebrews 6 verse 12. So we do not want you to be lazy, but to imitate, but to imitate those who through faith and patience or faith and perseverance inherit what has been promised. Many of us have become so lazy, very, very lazy. We are lazy, we are indolent, we are slothful, we are slow. The word lazy or the word slothful is the Greek word notros. The word slothful or lazy is the Greek word notros. Notros means to become dull. Okay, do not become dull. Don't become dull. Don't become lazy. Not trust. It's when you become dull. You're not out of a state of consciousness and alertness. Not trust. You are in a state of, of not trust. And that's where many find themselves. They are in a state of not trust. They are dull. They have become so dull. Indolent. Lazy. They do not become, we do not want you to become lazy. So God does not want you and I to become lazy or to become slothful or indolent or slow. But to imitate, to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. We looked at the life of Job last Shabbat and we saw how Job has been through encompassing trials. We saw how Job was overwhelmed with trials upon trials. And how Job persevered through his trial. And after which Elohim, who is compassionate and merciful, restored and rewarded Job. So it's, it's key here. So perseverance is key. Perseverance is perseverance, like I define, is movement in spite of opposition. So that's the definition for perseverance. Perseverance is movement in spite of opposition. It means you're making you're making movement, you are tempting, you're going forward, not because things are easy for you. The movement is not because things are easy for you. The movement is in, the, in spite or in the face of contrary circumstances. Each of the circumstances have an overwhelming force to pull you away from course. So, in the spite of voices, trying to keep you out of course, you are persevering, you are making progress, you are moving. That is perseverance. Movement in spite of opposition. So here we see in Hebrews 6 verse 12 that faith and perseverance are twins. Because many times we, when we think of faith, we think faith is all about instant gratification. Instant reward. If I get, if I have faith, I can move mountains. If I have faith, I can get all I want from from, from Jehovah. But here we see, as we examine the journey of the patriarch, Job, Ab Job, Abraham, Joseph, Jacob, David, we see that faith and perseverance go hand in hand. I shared with us last Shabbat. I mean, on Thursday, I said. Joseph was anointed king as a teenager. You would have thought the day he was anointed king was when he will officially become king over Israel. It took him over 15 years to be crowned as Israel's king after being anointed. So the, the period of his waiting, of perseverance, when period when Jehovah was training him to, to gain the stamina the character to stand in the place of kingship. So faith and perseverance, so so in two in two twins that we must master. What has made you so dull? We do not want you to become lazy, Hebrews 6, 12, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what have been promised. Now, the persevering faith. Now, what is this persevering faith? So we see here that there is, 
the persevering faith or the patient faith. So it says true faith and patience. So we can connect both words by calling two of those words the patient faith or the persevering faith. There is the persevering faith. How do we assess this persevering faith? How do we assess the persevering faith? How do we gain the persevering faith? How do we as believers, as covenant people, begin to walk in this persevering faith? We see the persevering faith demonstrated in the life of Job. Job had a persevering faith. Joseph had a persevering faith. David had a persevering faith. Abraham had a persevering faith. What is, the, what is this persevering faith? And how can we develop this persevering faith? I begin by making this statement. The persevering faith has a promise. The faith that persevere looks up to a promise. So behind the persevering faith is a promise. The persevering faith has a promise. Or you can either put the persevering faith looks up to a promise. It is this promise that the persevering faith hold on to in the face of countary situations. You cannot walk in a persevering faith until you walk or operate in a specific promise. The persevering faith looks to a promise. And let's see this again. Hebrews 6 from verse 13. I want to show you how Elohim helps us develop this persevering faith. He does so by helping us assess the promise. You know, we, we know of the promised land. The promised land. So why was it, why was there a promised land? The promised land was to help them persevere through the wilderness. Because if you knew of the promised land, if you knew there was a promised land that Elohim has in store for you, no matter what, how long you stay in the desert, no matter how long you face a waterless circumstance, no matter how much you face the desert or you face hunger, as long as you know that you're on the course of the promised land, you can persevere through the wilderness. So the promised land was supposed to help them persevere through the time in the wilderness. Why there was a promised land. So the persevering faith has a promise. It looks up to a promise. So your Elohim gives us promises to help us develop the persevering faith. Now look at Hebrews 6 from verse 13. Hebrews 6 from verse 13. When Elohim made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself. Verse 14, saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. Verse 15, and so after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. Now look at the word, what was promised. There was what was promised. And what was promised was what made Abraham wait patiently. Abraham was waiting patiently for what was promised. So when you see this persevering faith at work, you will always see the promise anchoring or holding still the persevering faith. So here we see again, I repeat Hebrews 6 verse 13, when Elohim made his promise, so he made his promise to Abraham. Since there was no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. Verse 15, and so after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. 
verse 16. People swear by someone greater than themselves. And the oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all arguments. Verse 17. When Elohim wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs of what was promised, he confirmed it with an oath. Verse, eight, verse 18. Elohim did, Elohim did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for Elohim to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. Verse 19. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner Yeshua has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Powerful. Powerful word there. So we see Elohim making a promise. And he makes a promise on the basis of the unchanging nature of his purpose. He makes it very clear. And I'm going to explain this to us as we, as we progress. Now, quickly, let's look at Hebrews 10. Why you still have your pen on Hebrews 6, from verse 11? Let's look at Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews 10, from verse 36. Hebrews 10, from verse 36. Hebrews 10 verse 6. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of Elohim, you will receive what was what? Promised. You see the word promise is always linked with persevere. Hebrews 10 verse 6. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of Elohim, you will receive what had been promised. So there's a promise always linked to the persevering faith. There's a promise always attached to the persevering faith. Now look about the seven. For in just a little while he will come. Verse the seven, Hebrews ten thirty seven. For in just a little while he who is coming will come. I will not delay. Why is he saying so? Because they are these people are going to try us. And so the field is taking long. It's taking so long. The crisis or the trial is taking so long. Now the writer of Hebrew tells us. For in just a little while, he who is coming will come. He will not delay. Verse 38. And my righteous one will live by faith. And I take no pleasures in the one who shrinks back. So it is with the persevering faith. The persevering faith. In the face of crisis, you're hoping will change. There are things in our life we are hoping one day will change. One day this situation will change. And once those situations appear not to, not to be changing, Elohim is telling us that we should persevere. That when we have done His will, we will receive what He has promised. So behind the promise will be seasons of perseverance. So He gives us a promise. And before the fulfillment of the promise He gives to us, there will be seasons when we will persevere in doing His will. Look at verse 39. But we do not, for we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. Persevering faith. It is a persevering faith that saves. Salvation is a continuous journey. We are saved. We have been saved. And we are still being saved. It's a continuous journey of persevering. So we're told in verse 6 of Hebrews 10, you need to persevere. You need to. It's not, you, it's not a suggestion. It's telling you you need to persevere. If there's anything we need to learn in this time, is to, it's the need to persevere. If you're weak, you need to persevere in prayer. You, we've got to learn that we need to persevere. 
If we are ever going to assess the divine promises of Elohim and, and see the fulfillment of his word, we've got to understand the need to persevere. So here I'm going to explain something so important to us that is the promise. The promise of Elohim. The promise of Elohim. What is a promise? So here we see that Elohim has a nature of making promises. We see man makes promises to man. But when Elohim wants to make a promise, he can't swear by man. Why? He is greater than all things. So here we, we saw in Hebrews 6 that Elohim had to swear by himself in making his promise. Hebrews 6 from verse 13 tells us when Elohim made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself. Powerful. So you see the nature of Elohim is a promise making nature. But he doesn't make, he doesn't swear by, he doesn't swear in people's name. He's a greater, he's the greater, he's Greater are the greatest. So he swears by himself. So he tells Abraham in verse 14, in Hebrews 6 verse 14, Surely I will bless you and give you many descendants. And so by so he first makes a promise to Abraham by swearing by himself. And then Abraham in verse 15 waited patiently and Abraham received what was promised. We are all in a journey towards a promise. We are all in a journey. We are all journeying towards experiencing a promise. What is a promise? A promise is a declaration or assurance that one will do something or that a particular thing will happen. A promise is a declaration or assurance that one will do something or that a particular thing will happen. Do you, do, you, do you understand that even hope, hope rests on a promise? The same way, hope rests on a promise. Faith also rests on a promise. The persevering faith is impossible until we understand the power of the promise. A promise is a declaration or assurance that one will do something or that a particular thing will happen. It was on the basis of the promise that Abraham received hope. That Abraham received faith. Also, a promise is to assure someone that one will definitely do something or that something will happen. So first we see that a promise is a declaration or assurance that one will do something or that a particular thing will happen. And secondly, we see that a promise is to assure someone that one will definitely do something or that something will happen. So we see that a promise is a declaration. If I tell somebody now, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you 10,000 naira. That's a promise. Or I say, I'm going to give you 10,000 naira tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll give you 10,000 naira. What is that? It's a promise. Even if you have not seen the 10,000 naira. You are restful that tomorrow you receive 10,000 naira. And many times you begin to even live as if you already have it. Why? A promise has been made. A promise redirects the course of our life, a promise changes our history. God uses promises to change our history. God uses promises to change our life. And I'm going to show you how God used a promise to change Abraham's life. 
God is not going to change your life by reading down dollars from the from, from the sky. God is not going to change your life by reading down, you know, multi-million naira from the sky. God is not going to change your life through a promise. A promise changes our history. He makes a declaration or assurance that something will something that one will do something or that a particular thing will happen. So God makes a promise to Abraham. Look at Hebrews 6, Hebrews 6, verse 14. What was the promise Elohim made with Abraham in Hebrews 6 14? It says, saying Hebrews 6, verse 14. Elohim made a promise to Abraham. So I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. That's the promise Elohim made. To Abraham, and he made his promise by swearing by himself. And in verse 15, we see that Abraham waited what patiently. Hebrews 6 15. After he passed away, Abraham received what? What was promised. So here we see something so important. That God uses promises to change our history. God uses even promises to change our thinking. In the kingdom, he uses promises to change the way we think. Look at somebody now. You're sick in body. You're told you have a tumor. You told you have you have you told you told you have a disease in your body. And then you receive a promise from Elohim that says that you are healed. And then people will expect you to talk and confess to sickness or the infirmity or to walk like someone who is sick. But you refuse to think that way. You are thinking from the promise of God that says you are healed. So a promise changes the way we think. So if Elohim wants to develop faith in, in us, he gives us a promise. Faith rests on a promise. So that declaration or assurance that one will do something is what something will be done or a particular thing will happen is what a promise is. Elohim is an Elohim of promise. The Bible is a book of promise. Actually, the Bible is a book of covenant promise. I hope this thing will enter to your spirit. I hope, you're not just a, I hope you are not just a hearer only. I hope you understand the power of a covenant promise. The patriarch understood covenant promise. When Elohim wants to change a man's state, he begins not by doing magic in the sky. He begins by issuing a promise. A promise is issued. A promise is made to, to that man. No one can cause us the heirs of the promise. We are heirs of a promise. We are heirs of a promise. Now, quickly again, look at Hebrews 6 again from verse 12. Hebrews 6 verse 12. Uh, or let's start from verse 11. Hebrews 6 from verse 11. Hebrews 6 from verse 11. We want each of you to show the same diligence to the very end so that what you hope for may be fully realized. Don't forget, hope is born from a promise. Hope is a child of a promise. Hope is a child of a promise. Hope is a child of a promise. Faith is a child of a promise. So here the people of Elohim have been encouraged to show diligence to the very end so that they may experience what they hope for. Now in verse 12 of Hebrews 6, 12 says, We do not want you to become lazy. 
but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. Now look at the word imitate. And that word got my attention. It said to imitate those to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Did you did you ever see this word as a very important word, the word to imitate? Is that how you all put it? Imitate. The word imitate is the, the Greek word memetis. 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 We do not want you to be la to become lazy, but to imitate those. Wow. So Elohim actually wants us to imitate those. Who are we imitating? Those who through faith and perseverance obtain the promise. These are those I'm called to imitate. I'm not called to imitate people whose life journey speaks of weakness and failure or limitation. I'm not called to imitate people's life history. I'm called to imitate those who through faith and patience obtain the promise. So these are those who are called to imitate. And interestingly, the word imitate is the Greek word mimetis. Mimetis is, from the, is what, the origin of the word mimic. To mimic. Talk like a talk. No, it's, and it's so important to look at this word imitate. One of the things I observe about our daughter, our children, is that our children learn by this word, memetis. Our children learn by imitating us. They mimic you. One day I walk into a store. I walk, I walk to a store, my hands, my hands were this way. And I looked back, my daughter, my daughter was doing the same thing. She was mimicking me. Memetis. She was doing it the way I, the way I, the way I did it. So our kids look at us as parents and they are doing what? They are doing the same thing. Memetis. They are imitating. They are mimicking. They say it like that, they will say it. They say it the same way mommy will say it. So we are supposed to mimic. To borrow the English word mimic. It says do not be lazy, but to mimic those. To mimic to say, to say it like them. So our faith. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because the Petraka faith of old. The faith walk. Our ancestors. Revealed to us. Is the genuine faith. What Jude, Jude calls contending for the faith. Which was once and for given to the saints. So that faith is a genuine faith. That faith is a spiritual faith. We have to mimic that faith. <laughs> the word mimic or the word imitate is also the word follow. Now, if, you, if you have some other translation, it says be imitator or be followers. The word is used followers. The word followers or the word mimic. We are to mimic those who through faith and patience inherit what was promised. So who are they? And how do we find them? That's why in our Bible reading today we read Hebrews 11 from verse 1 to the end. And we saw that in Hebrews 11 from verse 1 to the end, Elohim reveals to us those who through faith and perseverance inherit the promise. And these are those we are called to mimic their faith. Oh. Imitators. Memetis. To mimic, to be a follower. So, in light of faith, persevering faith, the central character is Abraham. So right now we we'll look at Abraham's faith and perseverance. So Abraham is a clear picture of faith and perseverance. So Abraham will become our 
we use Abraham as a, as a sample of the one whose faith was to mimic. So we're looking at Abraham today, Abraham's journey. Last Shabbat, we looked at, at Job. Today, we explore Abraham's life as a clear example of what persevering faith is all about. It is this persevering faith that, that works out this promise of God. The persevering faith. Hebrews 11. Let's look at Abraham's journey. Hebrews 11. From verse 8. We're going to examine Abraham's journey of faith. As we've been told in Hebrews chapter 6. To mimic those of followers of those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. So we are, we are exploring Abraham as our example today of the journey of faith. Hebrews chapter 11. From verse 8. Hebrews 11 from verse 8. By faith, Abraham went called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance. Obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. Now mark this word carefully. Because many of us really want clarity before you move. Many of us seek clarity before we move. Look at this carefully. This is a man. Don't forget Hebrews 6, 12. Be imitators. Memetis. Followers. Mimic those who through faith and patience obtain a promise. Now Abraham is one we are mimicking right now. Now look at the story. Hebrews 6, Hebrews 11, verse 8. By faith, Abraham went called to go to a place he would later receive as an inheritance. Obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. Since we all want signal, and we want direction clearly. Now mark the first thing about Abraham. I said God changes a man through a promise. Not through direction. No. Not through clarity. Clarity is not what God uses to change your life. God will use a promise. The promise was the key thing here. Not the clarity. So faith and hope are children of promise. They are children of the same parents. So he calls it faith and perseverance. They are twins. Of the same parent. Persevering faith hinges on a promise, not on clarity. By faith, Abraham went called to go to a place he would later receive as an inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in a promised, say the word again, in a promised land. See, a promised is playing out. It was a promised land he knew of, not the map to get there. All he had was a promised land. The promised land. It says, by faith he made his home in a promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents and as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of what? Of what? Are, are you reading at all? Of the same promise, Hebrews 11, verse, verse, verse 9. And by faith, he made his home in a promised land, like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. So, this same, it was the same promise that was the key here. Abraham had walked in the promise. Now, these sons of his, Isaac and Jacob, were also heirs of the same promise. And to shock you, we are also heirs. I will show us in conclusion in our teaching that we are heirs of the same promise too. So as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise, verse 10, for he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is Elohim, verse 11. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had done what? The promise. the promise is the, 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 the promise is the key word there. It is a promise that bet faith. It's a promise that bet hope. It's a promise that moved him out of the country. Not clarity of the journey. A promise bent movement. A promise changes your thinking. It changes your character. We are changed through a promise. 
So the wife is even inclusive in the story of Abraham that she passed childbearing age. She got to where biologically and medically speaking, she came into menopause. A point in a woman's life where she can no longer conceive. That a promise is so powerful that even when medically speaking you come to the point where doctors tell you, scientists tell you it has been proven that you will die of this sickness, that you will not have a child, that you will die barren, that when a promise comes, a promise transcends all human calculation. That when she passed childbearing age, Elohim did not do a surgery for her. Or to refer for adoption, and we release the promise. Our lives are changed through a promise. So our strength is in a promise. The wife got to child, she passed childbearing age. She was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful, who had done what made the promise. Just by considering him faithful, who had made a promise, so she had the promise. So by considering him faithful, who had made a promise, the, pa the, the power to conceive came alive in the face of menopause. Verse 12, Hebrews 11, 12. And so from one man, and he as good as dead. That's a very, very descriptive word. Clear, it's a clear descriptive word of this man. Say he's as good as dead. That means in comparison with Abraham, Abraham and his wife, if you look at their cases in the natural, they were as good as dead. Abraham has come to a point where, naturally speaking, nothing good could come out of him. He, could, he, he couldn't bear his seed. Why well, he's as good as dead. Your finances can be as good as dead. Your health can be as good as dead. Doctors may have given up on you. He may, your life may appear hopeless. What you need is a promise. What you've got to understand that how Elohim changes our journey is through a promise. Abraham was as good as dead. So he, and that's an amazing word of hope to each and every one of us who, as we mimic this man who through faith and patience obtained a promise and we look at Abraham's life and Abraham speaks forward to us as we see Hebrews 11, 12. He tells us, and, from, and so from this one man and he as good as dead came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sands in the seashore. Nobody here is hopeless. So here we see Elohim's power to redeem. Him as good as dead came this mortal. Elohim brought forth from a man descendants as many as numerous as a son in the seashore. But, but in the past, this man was as good as dead. God does not begin with people who have dependent and sufficient in themselves. God begins with men like Abraham who are who as good as dead. Until you come to the point when you are as good as dead, you have no you have no good to God. You have no use to God until you come to a point in your life when you are as good as dead. I'm as good as dead. I, I know that for sure. I am as good as dead. I'm as good as dead. So because it is true men like Abraham, who was good as dead, that God brings forth numerous descendants. Is your finances as good as dead? Is your health as good as dead? Is your business as good as dead? Is your family as good? Is your marriage as good as dead? When we face situations, when things before us are as good as dead, that's when God steps in. Often that's when we give up. And the point of giving up is the point of God's biggest chances, of God's biggest moments to make himself known. Abraham was as good as dead. Look over verse 13, Hebrews 11, 13. And all these people who still, all these people were still living by faith when they died, 
they did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, you see. They, so they were those who did not receive the promise, but the promise defined their work. So in your lifetime, what Elohim does is that he uses a promise to transform our lives. So these people were living on a promise. Hallelujah. So they did not receive the promise, but they saw them from afar off and they welcomed them, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. Verse 14, Hebrews 11, 14. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country, they are looking for a country of their own. Verse 15. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Verse 16. Instead, they were longing for his better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, Elohim is not ashamed to recall their Elohim, for he has prepared a city for them. Verse 17. By faith, Abraham, when Elohim tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son. Verse 18. Even though Elohim had said to him, it is true, Isaac, that your offspring will be reckoned. Verse 19. Abraham reasoned that Elohim could raise the dead. And so in a manner of speaking, he did receive Isaac back from dead. This faith is a Pascal walk. It's not religion. It's not coming here on a Shabbat or doing a sort of faith is a walk of it's a lifestyle walk. It is not religion. If you are not if you are not in this place, then if we are not in this place, then we are playing games. We are playing games. First Elohim makes the promise to Abraham. The promise strengthens Abraham. And then the promise is fulfilled. And then Elohim said, Abraham, give me your son. How could God make a promise and give me a son and then ask me to sacrifice the son to him? Abraham did what we call calculation because the word here is the word reason. Abraham reasoned it out. Elohim gave me the son. And now Elohim is asking for the son. Abraham asked, I'm going to show something so powerful in this story. What Abraham discovered that made him release Isaac to Elohim. Say so a reason that Elohim was able to raise the dead. Are we in this place with God? Is that where you are in your journey? In our walk with God? There's no more fear. He began with fear. Oh, my fear. I don't have a son. I have only a son. Then he gets a son. Then in getting a son, Abraham's fear is he's free from fear. And the proof of him being free from fear is that he was willing to give up his son. Knowing he has come to a place of complete assurance that Elohim could raise the dead. Are we in a place where we are free from fear? If you're still having fear, you will hold on to your eyes and you can fear of heart. This is the only thing I have left. At least God promised me this. But Abraham was at that point, went through persevering faith. He was free from his fears. And God asks you, give all you have. You still have fears. You won't give it up. If he asks you, leave your country. To a place I will show you. You ask him, where is the place? Until you show me, I won't go. Abraham was not that way. Abraham pioneered this walk of faith and revealed to us the walk with Elohim begins with a promise. Now, in the period of walking through faith and perseverance, we discover the nature of Elohim to do the impossible. So, in the period of Abraham seeking Elohim for the promise, the fulfillment of his promise of a son, and the time when the son came, Abraham learned something. Abraham learned the nature of God in the aspect of a God who can do the impossible. Think of yourself being Abraham. You were you are 100 years old. You now have a son. Your wife has passed, passed childbearing age, and then she now has a child. What happens to you? You now... You now understand the nature of God of the impossible. Because why? It is not a story you read. It is not, it, you know, some of us read it, books on the impossible. 
Some of us hear impossible things from afar. Oh, God did this, these impossible things from afar. We read it in the Bible. How God parted the Red Sea. How God, how Jordan parted. How God did miracles. We see great things in the Bible, but they, they are not our story. For Abraham, it was not a book he was reading. Abraham had experienced it. After how many years I can have a son? My, I know my wife. She was she had passed menopause. Now she has a we have a son. So we are product of a miracle. That point on, that experience of Isaac made Abraham discover the God of the impossible. He did not read about the God of the impossible. He discovered the God of the impossible for himself. The God of the impossible. This discovery for Abraham was a life it was potent. It was rich. So there's something that happens to us when we discover the God of the impossible. We now embrace Him as the God who is sufficient. Because to find Him as a God who is impossible is equal to find Him as the God who is sufficient. <laughs> so when Abraham knew the God of the impossible, he was prepared to lay down Isaac, while he has now known the God who is sufficient. <laughs> you cannot know him as the one who is sufficient until you know him as the God, God of the impossible. And these discoveries are not gotten in convenience. That's why many go and lost some couples, get married, 40 years, no child. Some are people are, there are people not praying for children. The things you get cheaply or freely, there are people who are persevering in faith for it. There are those who are praying for a mother companion right now. They've been trying, but it's not happening. There are those who are praying for a job right now. They've been trying to get a job, but it's not happening. Elohim allows us to go through seasons of trials so we can discover him as a God of the impossible. You don't know him as a God of impossible inconvenience. He allows limitations and allows certain frustrations and certain boundaries and restrictions and closed doors. Sometimes he allows sickness like he did for Job. He allows circumstances you can't explain. The death of a loved one. There are those who have lost loved ones as I'm speaking right now. They've lost their loved one. Those who have lost their health. There are those who have lost their life savings. They have lost Things so dear to them. And they ask, why? How can God, God, the loving God, allow me to go through evil? They are those who are asking the question of evil. If there's a God in this world, why so much evil? Why am I going through this thing? Why me? Why me? God allows it to be you so you can discover the God of the impossible. That's why you allow Job to go through the crisis. So God, Job can find the God of the impossible. He allowed David to go through seasons of being the fugitive from Saul to discover the God of the impossible. He allowed Joseph to go through seasons in a dungeon, seasons of being sold as a slave, seasons of betrayal, so they can discover the God of the impossible. It is in discovering the God of the impossible that this patriarch eventually finds the God who is sufficient. The God who is sufficient is not discovered in comfort. He is discovered in crisis. You will discover the God who is sufficient in crisis. We find him sufficient. We find him sufficient. So Abraham gave up his only son. The same son he was he longed so much for. Because at the point of Isaac coming into his life, Abraham discovered the Elohim was sufficient. But there's something else I want to show us in the life of this man, Abraham, as we as we're exploring persevering faith. Romans. Romans 4. Romans 
Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. From verse 1. A long reading, but it's a very, very, very interesting reading. Romans chapter 4 from verse 1. What then shall we say that Abraham, our forefather, according to the flesh, discovered in this matter? If in fact Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before Elohim. What does scripture say? Abraham believed Elohim and was credited to him as righteousness. Verse 4. Now to the one who works, wages are not credited as a gift, but as an obligation. However, the one who does not work, but trust Elohim who justifies the ungodly, their faith is credited as righteousness. David says the same thing when he speaks of the righteousness, the blessedness of the one to whom Elohim credits righteousness apart from work. Verse 7. Blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whom Jehovah, whose sin Jehovah will not count against them. Verse 9. Is this blessedness only for the circumcised or also for the uncircumcised? What have we what have what we have been we have been saying that Abraham's faith was credited to him as righteousness? Verse 10. Under what circumstances was it credited? Was it after he was circumcised or before? It was not after but before. And he received circumcision as a sign, a seal of the righteousness that he has that he had by faith, while he was still uncircumcised. So then he is a father of all who believe, but have not been circumcised, in order that righteousness may be credited to them. Verse 12. And he is and he is then also the father of the circumcised, who who not only are circumcised, but who also do what? Follow in the footstep of the faith that our father Abraham had before he was circumcised. Now We'll continue the reading, but let's stop there. Let me throw some light here. Now, in, 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 in Hebrews 6, verse 12, we see the word memetis, say, be follower of them who through faith and patience obtain the promise. The word memetis is to mimic. But here we see another word, follow. It says, follow who are, who also follow in the footstep of faith that our father Abraham had before he was concise. Now, the word follow here. The word chosen in the Greek here is not the word mematis, it's the word stoikeo. Stoikeo is a different word from the word follow, which speaks of mimic, to imitate. But here is the word stoikeo. To stoikeo in the full step of faith. The word stoikeo is to proceed in a, in a role as the march of a soldier or to go in order. I will explain. Abraham reveals to Abraham reveals to us that Abraham is not just an example a pattern but we are called to walk in this walk in the footstep of Abraham that means to walk behind the word step means to walk in the same order that means we are supposed to walk in the same order of Abraham the order of his face step the same way soldier the marching of a soldier in one in one row, so we are walking. So that's telling oh, to follow. It is not just you know there are different kinds of following. You can follow someone beside them. Following doesn't have to be up behind. You can follow someone by being beside them. So I can follow you out by being beside you. So we are walking together. But that's not telling oh. Telling oh is not walking beside. It is walking behind in the same row. So to follow is to walk in the same order. It means to go in order. It means to direct one's life. It means to conform. As we, so these two words are so powerful. The word memetis and stekeo. We must unite the two words. First, we mimic, and second, we stekeo. We, we mimic, and then we conform. Did you see that? You felt the gift by mimicking their faith. You say the same way they say it, but eventually for mimicking, we come into conformity. To come into the same conformity. So we see here, it says, follow in the footsteps of the faith of our father Abraham. The footstep. Step girl. You are following a course.
So we have to be imitators and followers of the faith work of the fathers of faith. So important say it. Now look at look at look at verse 13 now. Hebrews, I mean Romans 4, verse 13. Romans 4 13. So and by finding the word step, okay, oh, to follow in the footsteps, that is to proceed in a road as in the march of a soldier. To proceed in the road as in the march of a soldier. To go in order. Look at verse 13. It was not through the law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise. Now the word, now again the word, the same word comes. Receive the promise that he would be heirs of the world. But through the righteousness that comes by faith, verse 14, Hebrew, Romans 4, verse 14, for those who depend on the law, for those, for if those who depend on the laws are heirs, faith means nothing, and the promise is worthless. Because the law brings rods, and where there is no law, there is no transgression. Verse 16, therefore the promise comes by faith, so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring. Not only to those who have the law, but those who have the faith of Abraham. He is a father of us all. Verse 17. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of Elohim, in whom we believe. The Elohim who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that are not. Verse 18. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed, and so became the father of many nations. Just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Verse 19, Romans 4, verse 19. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was a hundred years old, and that Sarah's womb was also. Oh, hallelujah! 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 Without weakening in his, weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead. Since he was about a hundred years old, also that Sarah's womb was also dead. Verse 20. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the word, the promise of Elohim. But was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to Elohim, being fully persuaded that Elohim had the power to do what he has promised. That is why it was granted to him as righteousness. Verse 23, the word, if it was created to him, we are written not for him what? Alone. That means we are inclusive in the, in the journey. Alone. But for us, but also for us, to whom Elohim will credit righteousness, for us who believe in him, who raised Yeshua our Lord from the dead, he has delivered over, he was delivered over to death for our sin and also raised to life for our justification. So you see this this trend of the promise of Elohim. So not just to Abraham alone, but also to us also. We are also inclusive in this transformation. So it was credited to him as righteousness, but not to him only, but also for us. So that's a very sensitive word, also for us. Now look at this statement. As covenant people, we embrace a covenant promise. As covenant people, we must embrace a covenant promise by understanding the validity of the faithfulness of the one who has promised, irrespective of the circumstances. We stay unwavering, that is, a persevering faith. Look at this. It's a serious issue. Now, this man faced the fact that he was as good as dead. The wise woman was dead. The wise woman was dead. We, are, we see that against all hope, Abraham in a hope believed against all natural hope. Every natural hope failed. But Abraham found a new hope in a promise. Because Elohim's promise always inspires a, a new hope. So as covenant people, we must embrace a covenant promise. So 
it wasn't just an easy journey for Abraham like it will be for you and I today. Many of us, you're facing your finances as good as dead, your health is as good as dead. The doctors have told you there is no cure. You are in a place of devastation. Abraham was equally at that point in his life. We see in, him, in Romans 4 verse 18, against all hope, Abraham in hope believed, and so became the father of many nations. Just as have been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Verse 19, without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead, since he was about a hundred years old. And Sarah's womb was also dead. Abraham was in a critical mass. So, him and his wife were two hopeless people. They were in a, they were two hopeless cases. Sarah's womb was dead. Verse 28, he did not waver through unbelief. He did not waver through unbelief. <laughs> what you do with God's promises now matters. I'm telling you. What you do with the promises of God now matters. Why? The promise of God bends faith. When did Abraham get his giant faith? It was from the promise. The faith that tells you that one day you own your own house. One day you own your own business. One day you, not only be, you will not always be this way. One day greatness will come. One day, one day things will change. The, the, the faith to believe for a change has to come first through a promise. He comes in the promise of God. He did not waver through unbelief regarding, he says he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God. Regarding every other issue, Abraham can question every other issue, but God's promise is above questioning. You don't question the promise of God. What if you dying and the promise says you will live. Even if life goes out of you, as long as the promise stands, the promise is the prophecy. God's promise is prophecy. When God makes a promise, he's prophesying to your future. A promise is a prophecy to your future. So what you call a prophecy is a promise future. It is that which Abraham hinged on in the face of the deadness of his wife's womb. <laughs> Why it was a hundred years? The wife was, the womb was dead. Elohim begins the promise construct. says, from today your name will no longer become Abraham. I'm calling you Abraham. Your wife's name is what? Sarai. Oh no, she will no longer be called Sarai, but Sarah. Oh, the father of many nations. God was calling him the father of many nations when he was, he had nothing. God, God does not call you by your circumstance. He calls you by his promise. God does not call the man by the circumstance of the man. He calls you by the prophetic promise over your life. So you can be without one pen, one cover, but if you have a promise over your life, that is, that is sufficient for you. A promise gets you where you are. It gets you to where you are going. Abraham did not waver regarding the promise of God. 
I tell you. When Abraham and his wife went to check for the, the doctor, the check that oh, we just did a test on your wife. I see the report say your wife's womb is dead. We're sorry, go adopt or try this other medical stuff and do these things. And Abraham came out with Sarah and said, Oh, Sarah, I hear the promise of God. There is a promise of our life. A man with a promise does not pay attention to him, to naysayers. You see, when you begin to pay attention to naysayers, you are always, you are always grouchy and complaining, and then you are, you are after what people say about you, their opinion of you, you can't sleep because people are saying things about you. That's because you don't have a promise. Once you apprehend a promise, you don't care what people are saying. You even be a new name in the face of that Poverty, you will call yourself Mr. Rich. We are wealthy and rich. We are blessed people. In the face of abject poverty and lack, oh, we are blessed ministry. In the face of devastating circumstance of barrenness, oh, my womb is full of babies. In the face of lack, oh, I'm wealthy. A promise gives a vision. A promise is how he leads us. Standing on the promises of God. The hymn says that we are standing on the promises of God. All on that ground is sinking sand. Abraham stood upon the promise. So we see in Romans 4 verse 19. Without weakening his faith. He faced the fact that his body was as good as dead. Since he was about a hundred years old. And that Sarah's womb was dead. Verse 20, yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding, as far as this issue is concerned, regarding the promise of God. You don't bring unbelief to the promise of God. It's a mockery. When you stand before a promise of God, Mere mortal tells you, by this time tomorrow I'll give you 10,000 error. And you believe. Yeah, you, you, you want to sleep. I, a mere mortal, give people promises. And they hinge their life on it. And they come and say, Pastor, you said this so. And because, it's, because of my integrity, position, or person, I'm reminded and called into account at my promise. That means you can even come into account at the promise. My integrity, can be, my integrity and credibility can be called to account. And because of that, I will release the word. So you don't make a cheap promise. So if Elohim who is, and Elohim who does not lie, makes a promise, you can call his credibility to account. When he makes a promise, he obligates himself. He puts all the weight of his being on his, on his promise. So when you have a promise, how dare you tell me the doctor said that I, that I was told my family, they, they, they told me we have, we have a sickness in my family. They told me nobody can have a son in this family. Nobody can have a child in this family. Everybody died at the age of 40 this home. Nobody can, nobody, those silly things we say. You don't know what a promise is. You know what, in our family, there's a generational causes. That is why everybody is dying. Wait till a promise hits, get a hold of you. A promise is weightier than every case. Let the demons of hell emerge to get a lay a case on you. If a promise stands over you, it will fail. All of hell said Abraham would not have a son. But a promise came and laid, Abraham laid the weight of his conviction on that promise. And his son came forth. I have a promise standing. I'm standing upon the promise. I'm standing upon the promise of God. I will not die but live. I'm blessed in my going out and coming in. The Bible is a book of promises. You can go into it right now. You can find six the book of the law written. None of it shall fail. The mouth of God has spoken it and his spirit has got it. His word has been tried seven times in fire. His word is the book of promise. 
our Elohim, our Elohim, our promise. Persevering faith has vision on a promise. That's why the faith perseveres. Persevering faith has takes hold of a promise. In the face of abject poverty, in the face of weakness, in the face of physical impairment and disease and infirmity, in the face of the mountains, persevering faith holds on a promise and refuses to let go. Since we are followers in the full step of faith, step K.O., oh, to match in the order. We are matching in the order of Abraham's faith. The same way the patriarch of old has walked in his faith, it worked for them. Abraham did not die barren. I will not die barren. I've seen it in the life of, of this man. They died at a good old age. I am walking in the faith of this man. I don't care who try to walk and then they fail and they disappointed. No, for me, I will walk in this path. There will be no shame or no reproach. I know who I'm following. Somebody trusted God and see what happened to them. Ah, nobody knows, no, nobody knows the future. Those kind of language, they are not our language. Why? We are walking in step. Okay, oh, we are following the step, the full step of faith. Abraham left before us a print, a footprint of faith. We can track the footprint of faith in scriptures. And put your leg there. I put my leg where Abraham put his leg. In the face of object failure. I put my feet there. I'm walking the full step of faith. I'm mimicking Hebrews 6 verse 12. Say, be ye followers of them who through faith and patience. I'm mimicking the faith of them who through faith and patience obtain the promise. When we look at our circumstances, we are not up, we are not beholding the promise. When you look at your circumstances, you are not beholding the promise. Those who behold the promise do not behold their circumstances. They no longer see that circumstances. They no longer see the failure. They no longer see the sickness. They no longer see the disease. That is what I call faith. Faith is a manifestation of total conviction on the promise. So once you step into the promise, you step, you walk on the promise, you no longer see the, see the failure. So we see here, God tells us, he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God. But what was strengthened in his faith. The promise of God is a strengthening force. He was strengthened in his faith. How can he be strengthened in his faith when the previous verse showed us he saw the deadness of his state and his wife's womb was dead. Abraham just, Abraham Consider the promise of God and it will strengthen his faith. The promise of God strengthens our faith. See what he did? And he gave glory to God. Hallelujah. He gave glory to God. Thank you, glory to God. In the face of poverty, you can wake up and say glory to God. In the face of zero balance in your account, glory to God. In the face of that sickness and the report from a doctor, glory to God. We just did a test now. The computer shows you how you have this cell, this cancerous cell. We just check the computer. Oh, wow. You only have five days to live. Glory to God. I am walking on the promise. Glory to God. Abraham gave glory to God. Look at verse 1. Somebody help me with verse 1. Romans 4 to the 1. Please use the mic. Romans 4 verse 21. So powerful. The weight of this verse is so awesome. Romans 4 to the 1. Awesome. 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 Oh, awesome. Being fully persuaded. Being fully persuaded. That God has that God power to do have power. what he has promised. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. That's the one is just too heavy. See, being fully persuaded. Are you fully persuaded? Abraham being fully persuaded that Elohim had power to do what he had promised. He has power to do. The promise of faith 
Hallelujah. The promise of God is a pillar of faith. The promise of God is a pillar of faith. If you didn't hear anything today, go with that word. The promise of God is a pillar of faith. <laughs> The pillar of faith is a promise of God. So in conclusion, let's, let's, re let's review Hebrews 6, where we began from. Hebrews 6. Hebrews 6, 13. Oh, the promise of God is a pillar of faith. Hebrews 6, 13. The promises of God are the pillars of faith. Hebrews 6, 13. What changed for Abraham? When Elohim made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one, there was no one greater for him to swear by, Elohim swore by himself, saying, I will bless you and give you many descendants. Verse 15. And so after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. Verse 16. People swear by someone greater than themselves, and the oath confirms what is said. And put an end to all arguments. Verse 17. Because Elohim wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to who? Clear to who? To who? Of his counsel. To who? Confound it by an oath. But Elohim wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the to the heirs. Of what he has promised, he confirmed it when old. But a thing God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for Elohim to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain. Where our forerunners, Yeshua, has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Please, bro, 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 bless us. Read verse 16, 17, and 18. Let's pay attention to Hebrews chapter 16, 17, and 18. Thank you. Men swear by someone greater than themselves. Mm. And the oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all arguments. Mm. Because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear mm. to the heirs of what was promised. He confirmed it with an oath. God did, God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope offered to us may be greatly encouraged. Hallelujah. We were fled. We were fled. If you pay attention to what Brother Blessed read now, some, something comes strong. He said, People swear by someone greater than themselves. And that confirm that oath confirms what is said and put an end to all arguments. All argument is ended by an oath. <laughs> you not believe them. Somebody wants to tell you, you know, I swear, I, you know, I swear that if I do this, then let me die. Once that person tells you that, you not believe. Even if he's lying, if he makes an oath on his life, and I put my shoe, if, if I'm the one, if I'm the one, I swear. Let them, once he makes that oath, you believe him. That oath is to what create belief. So there was no more argument. Says God does not do that. See how God ended all arguments. Every argument. That's why Abraham had to walk it. Abraham knew. Abraham knew the power. Abraham knew the power of this stuff. Amen. Abraham knew the power of this stuff. Yeah. Can I can I have that please? Thank you. So when people so when people when people swear when they swear. Or make an oath that way, it confirms something, and there's no more argument. Even if they may be lying. 
Even if they be lying. Now look at the a bigger sense of this is verse 17. But Elohim wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear. What the KJV calls the immutability of his counsel. God's counsels are immutable. The word immutable is the Greek word amatetetios. It means fixed, unalterable, unchangeability, unchangeable. God wants to make known once and for all that once he makes a counsel, when he makes a promise, it is unchangeable. Hebrews 6, 17 is so powerful because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear. To make it very clear to you this morning. God is doing the same thing right now. He's making known to us the unchanging nature of his purpose. Of his promise. Of his counsel. The immutable, the immutability of his counsel. The unchanging nature of his counsel. And he's making it known very clear to the heads of what he has promised. He confirmed it with an oath. Verse 18, Elohim did this so that by two in unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. That should be your motto. Make it your motto. Pregnant woman, make it your motto. Wake up every day say it is impossible for God to lie. Check your bank balance. It is impossible for God to lie. When you check your hair, oh, that tumor is still there. It is impossible for God to lie. Check your life. If you feel weak, it's impossible for God to lie. It's in, you may, we must we must make a declaration daily. Ah, it's impossible for God to lie. By two immutable things, it is impossible for God to lie. It is impossible. I love that word. It is impossible. For God to lie. We who are fled to take hold of the hope set before us. What is the hope? That it's impossible for God to lie. <laughs> this is the hope set before us. It's impossible for God to lie. That's why we persevere. As we persevere, we know for sure that God does not lie. He cannot lie. The God does not lie. He cannot lie. So with that, we persevere. So saints, the promise of God is a pillar of faith. Let's, just, let's bow our heads right now. Bow your heads. Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Faith rests upon a promise. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the impartation of faith today. Thank you for the release of persevering faith. There's somebody thinking of giving up. You're tired, you're weak. You feel defeated. You feel there's no hope for you. You're asking yourself, will I continue this way? Day and night. Oh, God is bringing to you a promise. A promise is coming your way right now. And with that promise, God is saying, I can, it is impossible for God to lie. Rest upon the promise of Jehovah. Roll upon the promise. Walk upon the promise. Stand upon the promise. So we are standing upon the promise of God. Not in what we see. I may see lack, but no, I don't ref I refuse to stand on lack. I may see sickness, but no, I refuse the sickness. We stand upon the promise of God. Ask God for grace. Ask for God, God for grace today. To study the book of promise. The Bible is a book of promise. The Bible is a book of promise. Receive grace today to search the scriptures. Seek from the law of Jehovah and read. Say none of it shall fail. Huh. Seek from the law of Jehovah and read. Say none of it shall fail. The book does not fail. The scriptures does not fail. By two immutable things by, in which it is impossible. 
His Elohim wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear. Today, Yehovah is making known to us the unchanging nature of his counsel. The unchanging nature of his purpose is very clear to the heirs of what he has promised. So today, we walk in persevering faith. We walk in the faith that perseveres. We walk in the persevering faith right now. Thank you, Yehovah. 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 For granting us the faith that perseveres. Our faith will not waver. We refuse to waver through unbelief and the promise of God. Persevering faith rests upon a promise. Today, Yehovah, we put the weight, the weight of our confidence, the weight of our confidence on your promise today. We thank you, Father, in Yeshua's mighty name we pray. Amen. Have you been blessed today? Put your hands up for Yehovah. Appreciate him. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. So powerful. So powerful. To mimic those who through faith and patience obtain the promise. Obtain the promise. May we all discover the unchanging nature of his purpose. Amen. The unchanging nature of his purpose. Okay. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to make room for questions. You have questions or you've been, you know. Because there's something I said in the teaching that you feel, wow, this struck a chord in my spirit. And you want somebody somebody to because I think in an atmosphere like this must encourage one another. You know, faith is supposed to encourage. To be encouraging. And so it's key, it's crucial. So please let's come up there and then let's if you have Okay, thank you, can use this. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Uh, my question goes, goes like this. Uh, actually, yes, last week we were um, preaching about um, Job, perseverance. Yes, sir. And Job. Today is uh, Abraham. Abraham. So, my question goes, goes like this. Uh, is it a norm hmm? in, when you are persevering? Is it a norm that you must be in a working stage or state or be in your lowest head before? God shows up, or how do you quantify that in in, in your work your work with God? That's one question, and the other one is uh, um, faith and hope. Are they interlinked, or are there two separate things? Those are my two questions. Well, thank you, sir. Amen. Amen. Thank you for the question. Now look at the, the first question. Now, last Shabbat, we looked at James chapter 1, where James tells us, count it, all joy when you, count it all joy when you face diverse tests. That the proof of your faith is to walk out perseverance. So, in our journey with God, there's a starting point. So, the work with our Elohim is a relationship. It's a starting point. It's not, we don't start from perfection. We start from imperfection towards perfection. So from the imperfection we start from, we are moving towards perfection. In the state, in the process of our imperfection towards perfection, there will be varieties of issues first to be your kind of nature, which if you become a believer, you struggle with, your, you str you struggle with yourself first, you see in yourself the fight the fight with self, the car nature. There'll be a fight with sin. Fight that the devil brings against you. So the believer is fighting first the car nature. Because why? He he wants to walk in the spirit. But standing against him, walking in the spirit is the flesh. So you have to crucify the flesh. In the process of, of that, 
God comes in to help him to aid the believer because he must be aided by the faith. He must be aided by God. The period of his struggle is what we call crisis. The crisis are supposed to lead by the help of the Spirit to lead to his perfection. So these crises are crises we must all we all face in various degrees. It could be a crisis that the devil bring against you because why it's an adversary. Paul tells us that we all have one common enemy. He says he roars like he goes about like a roaring lion, looks for whom to devour. He says no temptation has faced you except what is common to man. He says God is able to help you out. So it's this. It's, it's not an, everyone has a common. It's a common circumstances. So all you mind you face is it. The same thing with every believer face a common enemy and will face a common temptation. And they will manifest in three dimensions. First, to be Satan trying to afflict you or attack you. And then you can overcome that and become victorious over that particular stage. It could be flesh. Areas in your life where the Holy Ghost is revealing you to deal with carnal kind of self. There are those who have anger, it's bitterness, it's unforgiveness. It's, there are areas like that of the carnal kind of nature. So you are daily overcoming it. You are daily, you are daily persevering to overcome it, and then so that's another state. Then there's a fight against Satan, against flesh, and then the world, the system of war, the world, which has to do with the renewing of mind. So be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of mind. That also involves persevering towards that transformation. Why we are in a journey towards perfection. So in the we face this because why our our, our starting point is imperfection. So the advance doesn't want us to get to that perfection. So all these are things we will face in that point. Hallelujah. So there's one question if I can recall. Can I can you help me with faith, faith and hope? Faith and hope, faith, yeah. Faith and hope. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. From 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 from, from, from what we saw here. That faith is born from a promise. And many times you can't separate faith from belief. Faith is the expression of the belief. That's what, why we see that Abraham believed God and was counted for him as righteousness. The belief in God expressed in action is what the Bible calls faith. Once your belief is expressed in action, it's faith. Faith is belief expressed in action. When you believe the promise and you express in action, he believed, he gave glory to God. The action is faith. It's, it's in that faith that hope is now born. F hope is an expectation. Hope is an expectation. So faith and hope are so united and unique, but you can't separate one from the other. That wherever you find faith, hope will always be there. And wherever you find hope, faith will always be there. So faith and hope. As so interlinked together. Hallelujah. Any other question? Encouragement? You have a question? You should, you should have a question. Okay. So, let me ask a question. I mentioned two words for follow. Two words for follow. Two words for follow. Two Greek words for follow. For follow. What do you understand by those two words? Memetis and Skokeo. No, lay master. Memetis, we mentioned two of a follow. Hebrews 6 12. And then Romans 4. I think Romans 4 is. I think, I think Romans 4. Memetis and Skokeo. Yeah, Romans 4, verse 12. What, what did you get? Did you really understand that? Yeah, you can help us, yeah. Romans 4, verse 
verse 12. Romans 4, 12. Okay, because of time. Time. So I mentioned two words. First, Hebrews 6:12 talks about be that's that which is our key text for the teaching today. Be follower, followers of them who through faith and patience of faith and perseverance obtain the promise. And the word follower there is a Greek word which memetis, which is to mimic, to mimic, to imitate. So and we see that we are supposed to imitate those who, through faith and patience, it's a must. It's not a teaching you hear and then go back imitating the world. If you're not imitating those who, through faith and patience, obtain a promise, then you're imitating the world system. Then you, you are you're imitating man. So you must imitate those who, through faith and patience, obtain the promise. And the word imitate is to follow, to mimic, to do as, to, to do as they did. So we now look at one of the, full, of the faith heroes, Abraham. So in Hebrews, in Romans 4, verse 12, we now see the same, another word for follow appears. This that the word follow doesn't mean, doesn't mean memetis. It means take a hold. It means like a soldier walking in, walking in, a, in an order. You are walking the same road. So we're supposed to walk in the same road as Abraham walked, the same footprint of faith. So those two words should be impressed in our hearts. Take a hold and Memetis. We are to stake a hole and then memetis fit. So that's the question I have for you. So just thank you so much. So one more question. I'm sure Brother Sam and Brother Blessed will help me with this one. I we mentioned something about imitating, not becoming slothful. Or lazy, and I mentioned the word not trust. I don't know if you were here. Not trust. When I mentioned not trust, I'm sure they're not. You are not here. Then not trust. Become. Don't become lazy. Not trust. Okay. Since you're not there. Okay. I said something about discovering. Once we discover the God of the impossible, we discover something else. We're blessed. Once we discover the God of the impossible, we discover something else about Him. So let Brother Blessed help us out with that. Okay, let us help us since. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you say God of impossible, yes. Uh, it means, uh, there's another word, it's a promise. Uh, uh, when you say impossible, God of impossible, that is a. Uh, uh, the way I understand it is, is, is backed up by the promise of God. So when Abraham was. Um, uh, when, uh, that is uh, sufficient. So when Abraham, uh, Abraham was, um, when Abraham, the stage of Abraham was that initially when they said you have a child at a ripe old age, he, he took that because it happened to him in his own face. Yeah. So you know that God can do whatever and whatever he can do. That's why he, he believed when God said you should bring out that same child. Yeah. For sacrifice. That's yeah. why I believe God for, for it. Hallelujah. That's, that's, that's it. So, like Rosama said, when we discover the God of the impossible, we discover the God who is sufficient. So, those two words, you discover the God who is sufficient when you discover the God who is impossible. So, Sister Tochi, faith, I said the promise of God is the, the, promise, the, the promise of God is the pillar of. The promise of God is a pillar. I mentioned something there. Say God, the promise of God is a pillar of the pillar of what? Correct. So the promise of God is a pillar of faith. The promise of God is a pillar of faith. So the last question will go to my wife. I'm sure she 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 know this one. You know, we what we looked at when we dealt with the immutable, the immutable counsel, the immutability of of his counsel was to do what? When he showed us in Hebrews, he says, 
God gave make an oath. People make oaths to to end arguments. So when Elohim made the oaths to re, to show to us the the mutability of His counsel, what was He supposed to do to us? To persevere, to persevere. So the the discovery of the immutability of God's counsel is to bet perseverance in us. So once you know it's a God who cannot lie, then you can you can go any distance with Him. Hallelujah, praise your God. So I'm sure we've been blessed by today's teaching, and because it's a very it's a practical teaching. I don't know I don't know the state where you are in. You may be in a state of financial difficulty, health issue, family issue, health. Whatever case you may be going through right now, this is a teaching you can take, apply, and then find deliverance to whatever circumstance you find yourself. The promise of God is a pillar of faith. The pillar of faith. We're gonna, we're gonna, let's take an offering right now. We're going to give an offering. So for those who are with us through the internet, you can give an offering through PayPal or through Catch Up. I want to encourage you to please understand the power of giving. An offering to Yehovah is such a privilege to have to give to Yehovah. The highest giving is a giving to your over. The highest giving is a giving to your over. And it's an honor to have to give. He gives seed to the sower and bread for food. And I pray we understand that our Elohim is sufficient. And we discover him as the Elohim of the impossible. We discover him as the Elohim who is sufficient. And I pray for those who may not have to give, but you have it in your heart to give that your over will bless you. That none will lack as a result of their giving. That you will bless every, every giver of seed. Every soul of seed will bless in this season. You will not lack anymore. I speak into every seed raised, hands raised up right now. I command the Elohim who is sufficient. We meet you at your insufficiency. The Elohim of promise will meet you at your weakness. The Elohim of promise we meet you in your dungeon. Amen. May he bring you out of every difficulties, Amen. of every struggle, Amen. and every trial today. Amen. May whatever areas of life you've been seeking him for direction and for help, on the strength of your seed and offering today, may you over richly strengthen and bless you. Amen. Yeshua's mighty name pray. Amen. Amen. Cast your seed. Thanks for being a part of today's teaching, and it's such a joy to be able to witness the Feast of Tabernacles. On this day, Feast of Tabernacles, we met yesterday, today, and tomorrow. For the next seven days, we are camping and receiving words from Jehovah. He commanded his people to honor and celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. And this is a, a, a time for us to connect with your over. And I feel in this season, God is going to help our prayer lives. And God will help lay in our hearts the spirit of perseverance. But I feel that your will bet in the saints, the persevering spirit. And that no, none of us henceforth be lazy and weak in Yeshua's name. Amen. So I want to encourage us to also pray about being a partner with this ministry. Partnership is so important. A partner of a ministry is a major or a vital role player in a ministry. No ministry rises beyond the strength of his partners. His partners. It is not enough to just hear the word. As you, as you implement the word and the word transforms you, you will see the need to partner. But those who don't implement the word will never become partners. So please, as this word blesses you, become a partner with this ministry. Help us, help us spread the good news of the kingdom that we've been called to spread. You can be a one-time partner, you can be a quarterly partner, you can be a weekly partner, a monthly partner, as your God gives you strength. Pray about being a partner with this ministry. And for those of us who, are, who understand the love of tithing, I want to encourage us. Tithing is the key to an open heaven. You give God a one tenth and it preserves the ninety. That the tenth is an aspect that preserves the rest. If you eat your one tenth, then the rest will be taken up by the, by the devourer. So please let's Understand these principles and engage in them. 5 p.m. tomorrow is our global intercessory prayers. Please, if you have a prayer request, bring them. Write your prayer request down. We will pray over them. Share your testimony. Let's hear what God is doing in your life as a result of this ministry, the impact of this ministry in your life. 
Thanks for being a part of this Shabbat Holy Convocation service. It's such a joy to see our faces, uh, handsome and beautiful faces today. Uh, may Jehovah bless your home and bless your life in Yeshua's name. Amen. So for those who are being with us through the internet, we love you and we're praying for you. I also want to encourage you to please share this broadcast, like our page, and then support House of Israel, Lagos, Nigeria. Let's rise to our feet as I pronounce God's blessings over you. I decree over your lives as you go, Jehovah bless you richly. May He cause His face to shine upon you. Amen. May He be gracious to you. Amen. May He give you peace. Amen. May all you put your hands upon to do turn to wonders. Amen. May Jehovah, Almighty Creator of the universe, bless you in all your undertaking. Amen. Whatever be the source of your fears, of your worry, of your pain, of your sorrow, things you can't share with people, things troubling you, the help you need in this week, May your God bring it down to your doorstep. Amen. May your God raise helpers for you. Amen. May men fall upon themselves to bless you. Amen. When you call for one, may several men appear to help you. Amen. May your God show you favor. Amen. Untold favor. Amen. The favor that will make you cry the tears of joy. Amen. The favor that will unlock the difficulties for you. Amen. May you discover the God of the possible. Amen. At the ninth hour, may you discover the God of the possible. Amen. May you find a God who is sufficient. Amen. In Yeshua's name. Amen. Go in peace. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.